Okay, everyone, I think we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, if there's any questions kind of throughout the process, feel free to type them into the chat and we'll try to you know, address them here at the end of the webinar. Um, so before we jump into everything, I want to provide a little bit of introduction and background on myself. My name is Kevin O'Brien and I'm a marketing automation solution advisor here at HireLogic. And I've been in the marketing automation and the analytics space for most of my career. And before actually coming to Higher Logic for the last several years, I actually have been um, working more in the commercial space with several startups. And I was actually the individual who was responsible for setting up and running marketing automation platforms. So at this point, I've used most of what is out there in terms of commercial marketing automation platforms. Uh, personally, I've deployed and utilized Eloqua, Pardot, Marketo, and HubSpot. But for today, we're gonna to be focusing on some insight that came out of our 2018 State of Mark Automation for Associations report, which is probably the, the first report of its kind to, to focus purely on the association space. And it dives into important topics like which types of automated campaigns are actually being run the most. So today is gonna to be the first installment in a series of webinars we're gonna be doing, which are gonna explore the three most popular campaign types for all associations. So those are gonna be event promotion, membership renewals, and then onboarding or welcome campaigns for new members. So the first webinar in this series is gonna be dedicated to event promotion. And um, we actually polled people all across the association space, whether they used our tools or not, and we gave them the opportunity to tell us about the different types of campaigns that they were running. And there were a lot of different answers that we got, but nearly a quarter of our respondents consistently replied with event promotion. So that, that earned it uh, its top, the top spot of all our responses. And given how important events are for associations and non-dues revenue, uh, it's probably a great starting point for us today at this series. And we've seen a lot of real life evidence of this with our own clients as well. Um, event, you know, events are something that's very important to the Illinois Association of School Business Officials. But like a lot of other organizations, they just weren't getting the desired numbers of registrants or attendance for their events, particularly their annual events. And um, luckily, they, you know, they adopted one of our marketing automation platforms. And here's some of the proof of their improved success um, after automation for actually just their annual event, just a single event. So overall, they were able to increase their open rates by about 300%. And there were a couple different factors that went into this. Um, first and foremost, the promotions they were sending out were much high, more highly targeted. They were focused on people who had attended last year, as well as individuals who had shown an interest in the topics they were gonna be covering at their annual conference. They were able to utilize that in the messaging they were sending out to people throughout the campaign. They also, by switching to our email marketing system, were being able to increase their deliverability quite a bit. We have about a 98% deliverability rate across all of our clients. That's an industry high. And um, one of the reasons for that is we have a team here solely dedicated to deliverability and making sure that your emails are actually just ending up in the inboxes of your members. So just solely by switching to our servers rather than you know a shared IP like a MailChimp or a Constant Contact, they saw probably about a 10 to 20% higher deliverability rate. And the final factor was a tool we have built into all of our marketing automation platforms called Optimize Sending. And it's a very simple tool to use. It's really just the click of a button. And it's a machine learning program that will look at when each individual historically has opened your emails. And then it'll actually send out your emails to that person at the time when they are most likely to open it. So it ensures that when someone opens their email, your message is gonna be right at the top of their inbox. And ultimately, this led to an uh, increase in event attendance of about 45% and an increase in event revenue of about 35%. So that was an additional $20,000 more than they were expecting. Again, this was just from a single automated event. So one of the major factors for their success was that they were actually able to integrate their AMS with the marketing automation platform. So having access to all of that detailed data about their members, it gave them the ability to really easily target the campaigns very specifically, and then tailor the promotional experience to each individual they were inviting automatically. So we're going to look into some hypothetical workflows that could really work with any association using market automation. So ultimately, we can break down an automated event campaign into three major parts. The first part is just letting people know that the event is even happening. Um, you can probably think of this as a save the date portion of the campaign itself. 
So first and foremost, we need to decide you know, who's actually going to be on the invitation list. Um, we could invite everyone, or we could choose just to invite people who actually live near the event itself, or we could focus on people that have actually shown an interest in topics that are going to be covered at the event. Then we have to pick you know, one of the multitude of ways that you could actually add the right people to the campaign. And your options may also depend on kind of the features that you have turned on in your market automation platform itself. So in this example workflow, we're going to be making use of the market automation platform in combination with web tracking for a much more targeted approach. And full web tracking is built into our platforms. So in this instance, instead of just inviting all the members that you have to an event, we're choosing to just invite individuals when they actually show interest. So our web tracking is going to track every page and all the content on your website for you automatically. And then if a member visits the page, anything that contains information on the event, they can then automatically be added to our Save the Date campaign. So they'll hit a page that either corresponds with a topic or the registration page itself, automatically will get a registration email, and then they'll be added you know, to the registration campaign itself. If they don't engage, you could also have the platform automatically send them a reminder. And these logic rules that we create for the campaign is just going to generally be moving them along according to the actions that they are or are not taking kind of throughout the process. So once we've raised awareness that our event is happening, we then need to start giving out some calls, some calls to action to actually get people to register and sign up. So we can choose, again, just to follow up with absolutely everyone, um, you know, whether they clicked or opened or didn't click or open any of those emails, or we could just choose to focus in on the individuals, individuals that actively engage with the campaign. Depending on the type of campaign you're running and if something like seating might be limited, either approach could be appropriate. Then we need to determine how we want to space out the communications for the campaign. And you're going to want to make sure you keep your calendar dates in mind, making sure everyone gets the right info at the right time based on something like when registration might end or when someone might need to submit a budget approval to a decision maker, things like that. So with each call to action, keep in mind that not everyone's actually going to take that action. In fact, most people probably won't. And automation can help prevent you from losing those potential registrants by following up automatically with those people who actually aren't taking the actions you want. They aren't clicking on emails. They're not opening them in general. And it's just as important to follow up with the people that aren't engaging with your emails as it is to follow up with the people that do. So no matter what each person in the campaign or does or doesn't do, we want to make sure we have a relevant path to send them down. So again, going back to this sample workflow we have here, um, you know, an early bird email is sent out for campaign registrants. If they register, great, automatically we'll get information about the campaign, maybe hotel information, and you know, they're taken out of this workflow. If they don't, then maybe they get a reminder right before the early bird ends. If that still doesn't do it, maybe another reminder email a week just before registration closes. And if at that point they still haven't registered, maybe a last chance email right maybe the day before registration actually closes. And keep in mind, if at any point during these follow-up emails they do register, they're taken out of that workflow and they're put right into the information campaign. Again, all automatically for you. And in our platform, this is actually all even templated out. All you would have to do is actually write the emails and drop them in, but the logics and the workflow is already done for you. So speaking of follow-up opportunities, something that has been pretty widely adopted in the commercial space for a long time now is known as card abandonment. And this is something most of you are probably familiar in more of a retail sense. Um, Amazon.com was probably one of the major outlets to popularize this. Uh, concept's fairly simple. If you're shopping on their website, you put something in the cart and you leave the site without purchasing it, they'll send you a reminder email saying, hey, did you forget to purchase this? You know, maybe an hour later, maybe a day later. Um, it's remarkably effective for retail. It actually is also incredibly effective for event promotion. And the way it would work is, you know, someone begins to register, they hit that registration page in general, or they click the register now link, but they don't actually complete registration within a time frame that you set. Um, and usually one or two days is, is a good rule of thumb. And after that point, if they still haven't registered, the campaign will then automatically start to issue them reminders to complete the registration. And it's usually a good idea with those abandonment reminders to offer more help or resources in case the potential registrants have anything that might be stopping them from registering. Um, budget concerns, need to make a case to a decision maker, timing, things like that. And just generally, card abandonment, email, card abandonment emails have been shown to convert about an additional 10 to 20% of all the individuals who just open those abandoned emails. 
And it's probably the easiest way to add event registrants to your campaigns that you might have missed otherwise. And again, in all of our platforms, these are pre-built card abandonment workflows and card abandonment technology in general. So you can actually add that on to an event campaign with just the click of a button. And if we walk through the workflow here, we can see this is a series of abandonment emails. Um, you know, someone clicked the registration link, three days they still haven't completed, it's gonna get that first abandonment email, another couple days after that, it's gonna check again and then send them another. And then again, keeping in mind the time of your campaign, they'll get a last chance abandonment email, not three days after they read this, but right before registration actually closes. And if at any point they register, they're no longer gonna be getting these abandoned emails, they'll go right into the attendee information campaign. So finally, the last part of our campaign is just gonna be a simple series of emails to drive registrants to actually attend. So this is gonna be a little bit less important, though still critical for physical events, but it's gonna be really important for events that are free to attend. People tend to drop off significantly more when they are at any time for events. So for your reminders, you don't wanna just space them out as arbitrary numbers, you know, one or two days after they receive their last email. You wanna pick specific dates and build in logic rules as cutoffs. So, you know, a couple days before registration ends, you know, a couple days before the actual event is coming up, you know, the day of. Also make sure that you keep their activity in mind as well. You know, if someone is not engaging with any of your reminders and you've sent several, they're not opening them, they're not clicking them, it might be a good idea to come up with some alternative paths uh, to make sure that, you know, they're still focused on attending or at least it's gonna be front of mind. So no matter how you decide to automate your reminders, or how many reminders you decide to do, the key thing is just that you have reminders happening in general. Um, even the most simplistic campaign path can still be incredibly beneficial for you. And here's a real simple example um, that you could probably add on to really any event. Um, and it does, it does increase who ultimately shows up, even if you're just doing something, you know, a, a basic thank you email, and then you know three days before and then day of you send a reminder. So it's just three emails, again, would be entirely automated for you, but some very simple copy to add on to your campaigns. It's gonna increase your actual attendance rates. And I think generally the key takeaway from all of this is that you know events are, are really hard to plan and execute. And they take a lot of resources. If you can make the promotion of that event, your calls to action to register, and then all of your reminders entirely automated, it's gonna give you a lot more time to focus in on the event itself. And it's ultimately just gonna give you a lot more registrants and attendees at the end of the day. So that is the end of what we were gonna focus on today. I was gonna open everything up to questions. Um, so we have one question here, if we integrate with uh, Nailer or Timberlake, um, we do, if you currently are using our online community platform, then yes, yes we do. Um, we also can send out a copy of the slides for everyone. Um, the question from Renee, if you have informs, you automatically have access to the market automation tool. Um, it potentially could be an upgrade if these features seem uh, foreign or not something you've used before, you likely are on the uh, email version of Informs. And yes, it would just be a simple upgrade. Um, very easy to do and fairly fairly inexpensive for new clients compared to, I'm sorry, for um, existing Informs users compared to you know, purchasing the platform as a new client. Um, yes, the email optimization tool, um, Brandon had asked, um, is the email optimization tool built into the Real Magnet platform? Um, yes, it's built into the send options if you have the real magnet marketing automation. Um, and we might need to, you might need to reach out to training just to have them actually find that. It's, uh, it is part of the more advanced sending options. Louise asked if, I'm sorry, uh, Crystal asked if there were email templates already available. Yes, there are responsive templates already built into the platform. Um, there's about 15 responsive drag and drop templates and a couple dozen others in, in all of our platforms. And there's a full drag and drop editor built in as well. Um, Louise asked if we're gonna be covering the details of the marketing automation tools at Superforum. Yes, we will. We also will be announcing um, some pretty cool updates we're gonna be making as well as kind of combinations between the online community and the marketing automation. Um, Teresa asked if we have the actual informs templates for renewals. 
um, from Informs. So you say, yes, that should be on the higher logic user group. Those templates should be on there. Um, there might be some in the Knowledge Center as well. Katrina asked if someone visits your webpage, we can track and send them an email. Yes, with either of the platforms, we can do that. You'll have full web tracking. Um, to actually turn that on, you just need to add a simple bit of code to the web pages you want to track, and each individual web page would be tracked for you from there. And you could use that to automatically tag people with certain interests based on the topics of those pages. Um, it could be a trigger to add them to a campaign or a trigger to, trigger to send them a single email. A um, lot of different ways to utilize that information. Okay. Um, any other questions from the group? Yeah, if, if you all think of anything, you know, after we drop off here, feel free to email me um, or, you know, anyone you've, you've spoken with at the Higher Logic team. Um, but yeah, happy to answer one off questions or questions about, um, you know, upgrading if you all are on either the Real Magnet or the Informs uh, regular email. Um, also happy to go through some of those workflows that uh, were discussed as well and how to set that those up in either platform. Fantastic. Well, we really appreciate everyone's time today and um, look forward to speaking with you all again soon.